we are meeting here at a very crucial time in the history of our country. And one generation is passed away and it was really moving to see all the children wearing the mask of Comrade N. Shankaraya today to greet me with the flowers and that is the continuity of human life. One generation has passed away, a new generation is born, a new generation has come. So the red flag will continue to fly, nobody can put the red flag down. Yesterday the elections to the five assembly assemblies in the country have concluded. The exit polls have come. The exit polls also do not show a very encouraging result for the BJP. And in two states, they have given a clear BJP defeat. In two states, the exit polls are divided. But the mood in the country today is such that what the BJP has done in the last 10 years, what this Modi government has done, the people today are expressing themselves clearly against it. And that is for the good of India and that is what is required to be done. And my appeal to all of you, in fact the CPIM's appeal to all of you in Coimbatore who have elected a CPIM leader as, the, as your member of parliament to continue to support the secular formation under the leadership of the DMK in the state so that we must make sure that this time the BJP does not win a single MP from Tamil Nadu and that must be the objective in the coming days. But the Modi government and our Prime Minister continue to say that India is prospering, India is developing and we are becoming a world leader. In fact, the BJP and the Prime Minister have given a slogan of what they call Amrit Kal. Amrit Kal in the sense that they say that they are going to serve Amrutam to everybody in India under their leadership, under their rule. And therefore, the prosperity of our country can happen only if they are re-elected and come back to the government. But, continue. But all of us must, must remember, and those who know the Puranic stories, that uh, the Puranic Kathas that, uh, that uh, take place, how was Amrutam born? Amrutam was born when there was this Samudra Manthan that was taking place, the churning of the oceans. And when the oceans were churning, the Devatas were sitting on one side and the Asuras were sitting on the other side waiting for the Amrutam to appear. But what happens when the oceans are churning is that two, two cans appear and in one can there is Amrutam, the other can there is poison. So by mistake the Devatas carry the poison can and go away and the Asuras have the Amrutam can. How the Devatas managed to get the Amrutam back from the Asuras is a different story. When that time comes, I'll tell you. But the, now we are standing at that point when Amrutam has gone into the wrong hands. It has to be brought back from the wrong hands to serve the people and for the benefit of the people and the country and not to be used for destruction of the country and the people by the wrong hands. And who will bring that back from the wrong hands into the right hands? It is the unity of our people under the secular democratic parties which have now come together under the name of, under the name of India, INDIA, and it is this India block that will bring back this Amrutam for the sake of India and for the sake of the Indian people. And that is a big battle in the coming election that we have to face. So that is a big battle before us today. But then every day, some wrong information, wrong news and disinformation is put out by this Modi government. Today they have said that India is growing. Indian economy is growing at a rate of 7.6% GDP. 7.6% is a very high rate of growth of GDP. M Mr. Modi's government's own chief statistician of the country, Mr. Pranab Sen, he has given an interview saying this is based on wrong data, data that is fudged. Fudging of data or distorting data has become the habit of the Modi government. If we are going 
at 7.6 percent every year. Then why is it today that the FDI, foreign direct investment into India, has fallen by 77 percent in the last one year? Why is it that new investment projects, announcements of new investments by the government sector has fallen by 72 percent, by the private sector by 79 percent, and 44,000 companies or corporates are vanished from paying income tax in the last one year. That is, they have closed down and they, they, they corp, they co their companies are closed down. If India is growing at 7.6 percent, this should not have happened. And along with this is the highest rate of unemployment, the highest rate of inflation, and growing hunger in the country. The conditions of the people in our country are becoming more and more miserable. And this is the reality. In the last one year, the top 1 percent, 1 percent of our Indian people, the rich people, their wealth increased by 22 percent, 1 percent of the people. The bottom 25 percent of the people, their wealth decreased by 13 percent. That is, the rich is becoming richer, the poor is becoming poorer, and that is the result of 10 years of this Modi rule. And this if continues, the rich will continue to become richer, and most of the people of India will be, shoved, will be moved into a situation of starvation. That is the reality of Indian economy and the Indian people today. But at the same time, we, have, we see very, very encouraging news that's happened two days ago. All the machinery from the West and the most modern technology failed. When our miners were trapped in Uttarakhand, in Uttarkashi, and who were the people who rescued them? The foreign expert whom the Modi government called, he gave an interview saying we'll, they will rescue them by Christmas time. But in the span of 18 hours or 16 hours, 12 rat miners, they called rat miners, they dig soil with their hands. And they dug the soil with their hands and went through the hill and then saved all these 41 trapped workers in 16 to 18 hours. And who are these 12 people? All of them are Muslims or Dalits. The same Muslims or Dalits. The same Muslims or Dalits that this Modi government and the RSS and the BJP today spread hatred against them, spread violence against them, and they just want them to be ostracized from our society and removed from our society. The BJP wants to re-establish a society based on the Manusmriti, where it is based on caste oppression and oppression of women. But it is these people, these Muslims and these Dalits, who are actually the saviors of India. They are the ones with their hard work and work which nobody else will do. They build and they sustain our country. It is to them that we must salute today. The CPM salutes all our rat, work, rat miners today for the heroism and, and the courage that they have shown and tells the Modi government, you learn the lesson, you learn the lesson, you attacking these sections of the people, our minorities and our Dalits and our tribals and our women, these are the sections that sustain our society. They are the ones that build our society and you are attacking them is destroying not only our society but also India. And that is not tolerable. Then therefore you will not remain in government. You will be thrown out of this government in, the, in 2024 elections so that we can save India and create a better India. That is why today the most, most heart-rending and most inspiring thing of all these rat miners was when the Modi government offered them a reward for the, what they have done of saving the miners, they refused to take the reward. They said, we have done our duty. This is our patriotic duty for India. We have done our duty 
like a soldier defends our country, we have defended our people from, from being trapped in the mine. And instead, what did they say? They said, provide our mothers a house to stay in, build roads so that we can reach our villages properly. There is no need to give us money, but take care of our people. And give us dignity that in India, a human being will be recognized as a human being. Not as a Dalit, not as a Muslim, not as a tribal, but every human being is recognized as a human being. That is the highest value of life. What you recognize today is a fellow human being, not his caste, not his religion, not his social, uh, social status, but as a human being. And that is what they have demanded. And I think they are the finest Indian patriots that we must all together salute that they have taught the Modi government a lesson on what is human, humanity and what is humanism. This is real India. And this is what is being destroyed under this Modi government for the last one decade. In all BJP states, new laws have been promulgated in the name of either cow protection, new laws. We had old laws for cow protection, but new laws have been protected, either for cow protection, love jihad, or whatever it may be to target the minority community and to attack them and to murder them. We've had such cases that have happened in BJP rule states where attacks take place in a Congress ruled Rajasthan, but the Muslims are, uh, youth are taken to Haryana, a BJP rule state, and killed by burning them in a car. We've had, we have such incidents happening. What is happening to our sisters and mothers? 49, 49 cases of sexual assault every one hour in India today taking place during the last 10 years. What is happening to our tribals and our Adivasis? The Forest Rights Act that gave them the law, the entitlement for patas for their land in the forests, that has virtually been, that has virtually been destroyed. Today, their lands are being encroached upon by private mining companies for which Modi government has given clearance and they are destroying lakhs and lakhs of tribals' livelihood and their habitation. So the marginalized people are being destroyed in our country under this Modi government. And all this in the name of the pride of India. The real pride of India is with the people like our rat miners who have shown in practice what, Indian, what it means to be an Indian and what it means to be India and be patriotic for India. That has to be brought back. That feeling has to be brought back, which means this Modi government must be separated from the government of India, must be separated from state power in India. That is the only way in which we can save India today so that we can change India for the better tomorrow. That is why they are destroying the very foundations of the Indian constitution. And along with that, they are destroying all the independent institutions set up by the Indian constitution, the Parliament of India. No discussion takes place. You can ask Comrade Natarajan and Comrade Venkateshan here. In 11 minutes, they passed 22 bills. Without any discussion, nobody knows which bill is being passed, but they are passed. And Parliament is being redu reduced. Earlier, it was a talking shop. Now, there is no talking also in the Parliament. It's only brute majority that happens. On judiciary, there is so much of pressure. So much of justice that has to be delivered is not being delivered. And the worst is, of course, what is happening with the election commission. On the last day of the polling in these assembly elections, a government of India advertisement is put up with a caption saying, Modi government guarantee. A government advertisement goes by the name under the Ashok Chakra, the, the, the symbol of the of government of India. Instead of that, it is now going under Modi government. And Modi government, with the government's money, people's money that is being used for that propaganda, 
and that too during elections. And the election commission does not have any word to say. If opposition leaders say something, if Rahul Gandhi says or I say something, then immediately notice comes. But not for the BJP, not for the Prime Minister. So all these institutions, the worst is your ED and your CBI. Netiki, I mean yesterday in Dindigal, in Dindigal one ED officer was arrested by the Tamil Nadu police, caught red-handed, asking for a bribe of 20 lakhs of rupees. So Modi's ED is unleashed against opposition leaders, opposition politicians, and their job is actually making money for themselves and foisting false cases. If, if you say that Modi government is using, misusing the ED, and CBI to target opposition leaders, they say, no, we are fighting corruption. And if you are fighting corruption under your, under this Modi government, more than 6,000 ED cases have been registered. 6,000 nearly. How many convictions? 23. 23 convictions out of 6,000 cases. And most of them are not politicians. So what is the meaning? If you are an opposition politician leader, I will use easy to, to foist a case on you, to arrest you. But if you leave your party and join the BJP, you are Satya Harish Chandra. You, you have nothing wrong. You have done nothing wrong. There is no case against you. This is the manner in which blatant misuse of your central agencies is being done. And that is how they are actually creating a India whereby they will rule through their authoritarian, a fascistic authoritarian order. And anybody who raises their voice in protest against this Modi government, they are arrested without any charges being framed. For more than four years now, People are lodged in jail under the draconian UAPA Act and no charge sheet has been framed. Forget it, been put against them. No charge sheet has been framed against any one of them. Journalists who, who show the truth to the people of what is happening in the country, they are arrested under UAPA. And news portals who have the courage to show, like the Delhi-based news click, who have the courage to show what is the truth, what is happening in the country. Their directors and their, their officers of that company are under, in jail under UAPA. Till now, no charge sheet. Four or five years go by, no charge sheet. And in this, case, in this way, journalists who tell the truth are being arrested. And the entire media is sought to be controlled, except for some honorable exceptions. Most of the media is actually only propagating the views of the Modi government. So this is not democracy. What is happening today is actually an attack on people's fundamental rights, democratic rights and civil liberties. What is happening today is not the delivery of justice. It is using draconian laws to imprison people who are critical of this government. The parliament becomes dysfunctional. The judiciary is under tremendous pressure. Election commission is becoming more and more partisan. The ED and the CBI are misused. So what you have today is a state that is using all the arms of the states in order to suppress and destroy democracy. And the worst is what is happening to the non-BJP states and the destruction of federalism.